Ooh, what's up guys? This is the Riferman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Total War Let's Play as the Kingdom of Mysore. So to pick up where we left off, we are actually in a pretty good position to take a bit of a breather. Uh, we build up our own economy because lots of our regions are actually reasonably undeveloped. Uh, solidify our front line against the Persians because we will probably be at war in the future. There's a British force here raiding one of our mines, but it's just an army of militia, so I'm content to just hold here for now. But the main objective will be to build up my economy, build up this force here under Dilip, um, Akurdikar, and then send him west to go and secure some colonial holdings, as well as probably expand my navy somewhat. Got a, well, a, a Dutch force here, but I'm not overly worried about them for now. If they're just going to sit by my coast, they are more than happy to just sit there. The British are expanding their militia army with more militia. But I hold the bridges, so if they elect to try and attack me, they will have to try and cross the river, and we will slaughter them by the thousands. I am looking forward to attacking in Central Europe, uh, because, actually, it turns out I don't actually get howitzers. So no quicklime, no shenanigans. When we're assaulting these major European fortresses, we're going to be blasting entrances everywhere and then storming with militia, well not militia, uh, melee infantry, firing rockets. It's going to be an interesting uh, mid to late game. Rather than picking apart cities one army at a time, we have to send a handful against major uh, fortifications to make sure we get it. As it stands, we haven't got to worry about that now. We're going to build our economy up. We are going to make some serious cash. And we are going to mobilise the wealth of India to conquer the rest of the world. And I'd actually like to try and explore some of the uh, trade regions, if possible. So I'd, I'd probably want to boost my naval production. So the East Indies is probably the best place to go because they're so close. Ooh, hello, thuggy. I send my thuggy just to keep an eye on Zahedin, because that's where the British militia are being produced from. A new town here in Madras, so let's get you a craft workshop. Okay, so my expeditionary army is getting a Gurkha unit, it's getting an artillery unit. <clears throat> so you could probably do with... Uh, Two more artillery than maybe some interesting cavalry, so let's go for two 18 pounders. <gasps> War elephants. Three. Uh, one, one set of guns is arriving, plus two guns, plus the War elephants, plus. Let's go for. Oh, I've got native lances on the way. Yeah, that will. Yep, that will. Uh, Finish us off. There we go. Cool. Uh, 7,000. Probably want to boost the tax rate in our cot. That's quite a good money spinner. 4,000. So let's... Let's make a... Standing order that every turn I add on a fourth rate to my dockyard. You're one turn away from longitude watch, then you can probably start to crack on at naval architecture advances to try and get next level military ports. Good upgrades across the board. We got 2,400. So let's just upgrade the craft workshop, and then probably try to find a cheap upgrade. Dancing schools are a reasonable upgrade because they're so cheap and they provide just a little bit of boost to happiness and a boost to. Uh, Town wealth growth. Cool. Okay. Uh, these armies could probably do with a bit of reorganization. But don't have to worry about that for now. Yeah, it's got fourth rate ship of the line being built in Pondicherry. To be honest, you guys may actually begin to explore the East Indies Trade Theatre. Yep, even more British troops are coming, but they're just militia, so 
Not really worried. I mean, the United Provinces are a... They're a danger. Ooh, that's not coming towards... Oh no, it's going for Morocco. As is tradition for Spain. I think it feels like that... Is that like AI behaviour waiting for ships to pick them up, to sail them over to my continent? I think it is. So probably want to keep, really keep our naval production high with as powerful a ships as we can possibly get. Uh, yeah, keep churning out fourth rates every turn, then start to build, well, ideally another dockyard, preferably on the west coast. Not that there's any real reason, but it feels more thematic. you got east and west coast naval yards. I think that's part of the understanding is India in real life wants three aircraft carriers because they want one in the east, one in the west, and one is kind of a reserve to allow... To allow uh, to make sure there's no cover, there's no coverage drop in wherever they need it. So I'd like to put. Ooh, Persians are massing. I mean, we are going to be at war at some point. <laughs> the Barbary states get repelled from their own attack. Nicely done. Um. So what I want. So some. Yes, a, te uh, a technology upgrade. You guys can leave Srinagar. You guys. Can leave Lahore. Up to 10,000, which is great. Some good upgrades. Tea warehouses, government buildings, craft workshops. I think with 10 grand, it's tempting to drop a few road upgrades. Actually, one road upgrade. One fourth rate plus a port. Ooh, actually... I just see this fella. So you don't necessarily no, you don't need your own second port. You can have a shipyard because you've got Surat here. So you're gonna build a sloop. Actually, no, not a sloop. I made a bad's gonna recruit. A levy unit to occupy the port. The, this arm is continuing to grow. Okay, let's try get some improved government going on. Plus, another craft workshop. Lee arrives. Any free spots? No. It's the Portuguese. That's just a sloop. Hello, Portugal. Excellent. That's providing some extra trade goods. Probably have a look to see if any of these others are ripe for the taking. I think they're all, f well, not friendly nations exactly, but fifth rate Essex. Well, at least we're not at war with any other trading nations in this area, so I'll take it. Uh, do do In terms of these ports, yeah, churn out fifth rates. But if we get a commercial base in, I mean, Jebex, I suppose, would be a, a more thematic. Ah, that's nice. raiders. I want to try to find a thematic merchant ship because everything can trade in this game, but I don't really want to use ships of the line to trade. Okay, my artillery is going to take a few turns to get up to that army to the north. Yeah, we've upgraded you. Okay, so Royal Pindi. Ooh, actually, I'm going to take a while to get that. Okay, we need to upgrade you to a traditional university. The British fleet is the British fleet. Leave them to it. Yeah, we're going, we're going to push into the Americas, take Cuba. We're probably then going to take the last pirate region in Trinidad and Tobago. And then maybe prob maybe one. It's, it's, it's un I'm unsure about where I'm going to go after that, because you've got quite good relations with Spain. Actually, France is dead, so we can probably go and sweep up some of their um, rebel regions. What? Why? Why is my phone talking about La Liga? I mean, I know I know it's because they mentioned Spain, but I didn't make them make the voice thingy turn on. Hmm. Big Brother's always listening. 
Right, okay. Just got to bear in mind, these Persia and Britain are allies, so should we... Uh, should we be attacked, we'll be hit by both armies at once. So that Northern army may get reinforced. So, 11,900, which is pretty awesome. Ashok Shahai. There you go. A handful of, of melee troops will help so help uh, buff your power. Okay, I could probably do with upgrading the Subadar's Palace in the south. Keep going with the fourth rate investment. I like investing in farms when I've kind of made my major investments already. That way I can use it to spend whatever I've got left. You don't need military buildings yet. Could probably do with boosting my military production up near the front. See, 600 gold isn't enough for anything. Your levy should be done. There it is. Port Bandar. Another port. You know. It. Right, okay. Okay, so. Aha! We got a spare sloop down here. Occupy this port. Because you get two, we get two um, ports here. Hmm. Oh, I didn't mean to upgrade this fella. To be honest, I might actually change you over to the naval architecture. Reform naval architectures anyway, because we do need we do need the next level dockyards. We can't rely on four rates. Plus, if it takes eleven turns, maybe reduce it to six or seven by upgrading the university. That's still like a stack of fourth rates we'll be able to produce. The Ottomans are our buffer zone from rest of the rest of Europe. I'm intrigued if the AI, to see if the AI actually invades the Ottoman uh, heartland, if you like. But I fear they may just kind of stop because they can't work out how to negotiate the crossing. Yeah, Persia's trying to steal our technology. Persia will eventually, yeah, Persia will eventually draw us into war against the Ottomans because they will we'll take Esfahan, build up a front line against Baghdad, and suddenly the Ottomans will be our enemies once again. Thuggy in Mysore. Okay, the Thuggy in Mysore can go up. To Esfahan, get some visibility. What's going on there? Coke Blast Furnace is done. Separation of Powers is done. 16,000 now. So, String of Patna. Don't do Rights of Man. Do Wealth of Nations. Five turns for some serious bonuses. And then Patna itself. You've gone to Seed Planting Drill. I probably want you on. So, an example is if I click. Military Engineer School. I get great guns, rockets, mortars, which I hate mortars because they never work well, and 24 pounders, but nothing else actually in the rows below it produces howitzers, it's just mortars. Um, so I might keep driving up the... I don't know, it's probably, it's probably good that I keep investing in my economy. Especially now as I'm trying to boom. So my shipyard at Port Bandar is done. We're going to upgrade you to a dry dock. Or to a dockyard, sorry. Keep our investment in fourth rates going. Maybe upgrade you to a commercial basin, but that's a very expensive purchase. Upgrade you to an Iron Master's Forge. Upgrade you to an Iron Master's Forge. Or do I, yeah, drop a cobbled roads? So in theory, cotton's probably the smart decision. Uh, yeah, it would be the smart decision, but I'm content to just keep producing a tea in India. 
464. Recruit some Hindi Musketeers. Because those guys could be a problem. You need to probably want a bit more artillery. Yeah, all our military troops have been done. War elephants have been recruited, so they can be working north. This guy is just going to hold as my defensive army to cover the south. I'm not interested in fighting those Dutch just yet. Oh, and again. Okay, right. First purchase, college. So this is part of the reason why I like to have good roads, is it means that you can kind of recruit from everywhere and people don't... You can recruit from the entire continent and armies can traverse the lands pretty effectively. Not to mention we're cranking through a lot of end turn phases right now, so I like having roads to provide that boost town wealth every turn. Yeah, it won't be long before Prussia comes at us and... Like, if, if those guys managed to land, they would tear me a new one. So I need a good navy, and I need... To be honest, I need to fortify my coast as well. Because I cannot have them attacking my homeland and blitzing through my territories. So in the end, I'll need all of my... All of my border cities to be fortified with some level of garrison. But then with quicklime, it becomes that much more difficult to stop. But it should still be fun. Yeah, there's lots of rebel regions in North America that I can take to build up my empire, but I do want to start with Cuba because it's the Dutch territory. I'm already at war with the Dutch. The Barbaries are going to Barbary. Let's see, the, the Portuguese have enough to worry about with Spain. See, Britain does have a territory here, but I'll, well, the awkward thing is... Well, there is an Ottoman territory, but I can leave one army behind to jump on that. Ooh, the Moroccans have rebelled and taken back Tangier. So what I'll probably do is if we fight, declare war, or if we start to fight against the Persians again, I'll push up towards Esfahan, form the front line, leave an army here to jump on Nerun, then when I do that, they'll sail up the Gulf and land at Basra. So poor Bandar... I mean, we may as well get a fifth rate built. Within two turns, it'll be upgraded. Go back to this donkey, build another fourth rate. Let's get another. Yeah, the Dutch have gone. Get another port built. Let's probably upgrade the barracks in Lahore because we might need some more recruitment done. We've got 3,000. Get some more. No, 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 no. What did I say? I know what I said. What can I cancel? That's well, probably going to be barracks up here to build this traditional university. Oh, the fact that Brits are actually in my territory is giving us a massive boost to resistance to foreign occupation. Actually, it would push us into the negative. Good to know. Let's upgrade the boardy house in preparation. You don't have any extra towns. Well, villages are not growing. Oh, because of devastation of enemy armies. Uh, let's drop 900 on a farmland to the south. Because I like working to the south up. Cool. First rate ship of the line. No problems, is a built first rate already, and I'm so far behind. Here come the war elephants. And everyone else is snaking their way up to the front line. That might be coming my way. Oh yeah, I forgot we took Nassau, Port Royal. There's lots of things we can take in the Caribbean. Without attacking Spain. Yeah, we're going to need a lot of firepower. A lot of firepower. So let's make India as developed as we possibly can while we have so few enemies 
to, to need to spend too much of our income on military spending. Especially when the end turn phase is also end, uh, they also pass so quickly. Because we don't have the problem of the Ottomans then making everything grind to a halt again, which is nice. Yeah, don't worry, Persia, I know what you're doing. Stealing my tech. Surprised the Barbary states are surviving so well. So long. That out in the Atlantic. But I suppose even when was when would, when would it have been? 1700s ish? They would raid and capture people and sell them off to slavery. They were some scamps. They got up to some mischief. Okay, some good upgrades. Okay. Get a port upgrade going. Get a fourth rate built. Get a another road built. What I might do, because you're fully completed, so you can be the start of a Caribbean squadron. Sail up to Surat. Embark your troops. Sail out to the Americas. Good. We've got 2,200. Let's probably get... Um, mm -hmm. I can't, I mean, I can't get any major buildings done. So I'll, I'll accept Craft Weaver's Cottage. Gets it to 15,000, which is pretty good. Okay, good. Yeah, like we so said, I'm going to need a lot of cash to start dropping ports on all these areas, like Satara. Need to start building up a garrison here to hold off the enemy should they attack. It's unfortunate that we can't track our prestige because we are not a major power, but I want to see how we rank. Not that those rankings mean anything, they're actually a bit weird. Everyone else is just going to carry on. Carry on advancing up the roads. There's another British army on the march. <gasps> Ooh, okay. So they might go for Neroon. Which is owned by the Ottomans. Or they might try and cross the river to the north of Neroon. I hope they go for Neroon. Because then Ahmedabad could be... Ex the army there can be expanded. And can then take the territory from the British. Lots of Ottoman movement, but no one to actually fight. Because you've still got Georgia as a buffer to the uh, the Caucasus. It would appear Prussia is not going to continue advancing east or west. It looks like Europe's kind of steadied itself, and the borders that have developed are going to stay that way for the moment. Or it might mean that eventually, when I start to fight them all, it will be like a take on the world type thing. So more expansion into America is good, especially while I have good trade relationships with so many other nations. Our trade network is vast, we must produce more goods to trade. Yeah, the pirates are going to pirate. 
Yeah, so if they go for Naroon, maybe head just a bit to the west as a bit of early warnings. If they go for Naroon, we can jump on that. So, congratulations, Hindu Musketeer leader. You can become your own commander in chief. Stand out front. Pick up some. Oh, that's the last Sikh warrior, Sikh warrior unit I can get. What about Sikh Musketeers? Yep, they're fully capped out. So. Two Kizzle Bashi. A Hindu warrior. Indian infantry guard and Hindu musketeer. 7,000. That means we can buy another fourth rate. Probably build up another dockyard because this is. In these dockyards. Produce some hell of a hell of a good bonus, hell of a good amount of bonuses. Jane, you've got cobbled roads. I mean, I'm gonna fix. Oh, I can't fix it. Oh well. Two hundred seventy-eight. Can this reinforcing army get anything for that money? Only levy and mob. So no is the answer to that. This dockyard's complete. Group my fifth race together with this force here. Good. I mean, I wish we could see our growth per turn. I mean, look, our tax doesn't yet match our upkeep, so if we start to suffer loss in trade, it will be quite significant. Six turns to you gain... Well, lots of these regions should probably gain another town fairly soon. Yeah. Lots of towns, actually. Don't worry, we should see some action soon. Our force should be landing in the Caribbean this turn. Then we can take Cuba. Then we've got... The attack on... Naroon which we're not going to defend against. We're going to let the British take it, then we're going to take it back for ourselves. Yeah, so they're all shuffling around, but I don't think it's going to do them any good. Not in the long run. <laughs> Russia is taking Stockholm. It would be interesting if they wipe out Sweden itself. But I wonder if they've got the capacity to do it. I mean, that's a hell of a Swedish navy. We couldn't match that, no sir. The Louisianans are playing very, very, very nicely, helping out and wiping out the pirates. Don't worry, Brian. If you go after that territory, we'll just... We're going to take it back. 11,000. Another thuggy in Hindustan. Uh, okay, then you go up to... Ardabil. Uh, Fleet arrives. Okay, good. Come on. Okay, maybe you might work your way across the Caribbean. Take Trinidad, take Antigua, take Port Royal, take Havana. Let's let's go. Let's be methodical about this. And because you haven't had a fight for a while, <laughs> let's actually fight this battle against Trinidad against the pirates in Trinidad. I'm probably going to want to build a, a small fleet of Jebex to raid British ports when I've got the opportunity to do it. And later, Spanish ports. Okay, let's... 
form up an infantry line. Very multicultural force this is. One thing I definitely do want to put into the mix. So we've got our native lancers. Who look pretty awesome, I think. Obviously got our Kizubashi cavalry, which are pretty good. Fire evil off. Then we've also got our war elephants. So they're gonna push up the flank with all this cavalry. This unit of Hindu Musketeers can be a reserve. 18 pounders and 12 pounders. Form up at the rear and open up. It's all of our cavalry massed on the left. Just run everyone up. Artillery's opened up, but let's get them to focus on the firelock arm citizenry units. Ultimately, if you guys get hit by my line first. See, even if my, in my Pirates campaign I got these guys, because I didn't even get these guys. Because these are like buccaneers with actual muskets. I'm still going to melee charge them with my battle line, I don't care. They're only light foot. My seat musketeers are actually pretty good. Okay, they got their volley off my seat musketeers. Hindu musketeers were pushed back. I mean, the dervishes are going to have something to say about that. Morale's coming into it. It's, it is coming into it, actually. The morale of the mor the impact of the mortars. Go get them, war elephants. But look, they can't even charge a pirate musket line without breaking and going, wait a minute. Get over here, Gurkhas. Just charge on. We need to hit those muskets. Hit those um, mortars. See, they came back. Bring in the elephants. Fight these pirate scallywags. Go on, go on, Gurkhas, they've got the fourth light mob. How about you? They're cleaving their way through them rapidly. Here come my Sikh musketeers. I suppose one of the main things to use my elephants for is they scare cavalry and they scare infantry, so they're just my shock units. Oh god. You hit. <laughs> they got some kills there, alright. Still the second light foot that's withstanding. Well, they're not withstanding, they're just running away. My, my 
elephants are on the charge again. Good old dervishes. How about you? Nice enemy general has been killed somewhere. Yeah, ultimately, there we go. Pirates be gone. Okay, so that's our first toehold in the Caribbean. What we're going to do is take this dockyard and knock it down. Because we do not need a dockyard. We will get some more sugar growing. We'll build basic roads. So that'll add a little bit of sugar to our trade empire. And everyone gets one loaf. <laughs> everyone gets one. Except for the Spaniards, they get two. Cool. Then when we take Antigua. Antigua. Oh, it looks like the pirates. Oh, Antigua, Punda, Poro, Cavana. Commercial base into the south has been built. And no one can get a port. We can build another fourth rate and we can spend five grand on another commercial basin. Because all of our ports on the west coast are getting a tremendous upgrade. And then with 412... I need a bit more to replenish, but you probably don't need to be fully replenished to go hit Antigua. So in Europe, I mean, yeah, Poland's going to be pretty powerful. The Dutch going to be pretty powerful. Russia's going to be pretty powerful. We're going to need as much money as we can get. Oh no, they're going to try... Oh no, they're just going to march north and continue building up their militia army. They're organising themselves on the northwest coast. So, yeah, I need I need good navies stationed around the transport zones. Because it should, in theory, be able to stop stop the armies from being able to get here at all without hitting one of our fleets, at least. So we can have a good crack at trying to destroy them. But it doesn't mean we need some of the more advanced naval technologies, not just ships, to maximise our movement distance. And therefore our zone of control, I would imagine, is the mechanic. Yeah, sorry this one might be a bit light on action, but we've had a whole lot of action right now. Now is the time I get to cash it in. So you've got Wealth of Nations, so String of Patna, go for National Debt to reduce upkeep. Which is super useful. Brothel's been built at Punjab to help bring them to heal. Maybe drop a couple of, some money upgrading Lahore's military infrastructure. So you could cross here, but is Britain actually at war with the Ottomans? No, just Spain and Mysore, so they can't trespass across here. I mean, they are just going to push up and join this militia army up here, so you guys probably want to keep on expanding. Royal Indian Cavalry Guards, Pahi... You guys probably want some Hindu musketeers. So maybe just the guns for now, because we've already... We can buy you. Can't upgrade anyone else to a major port. But Jane can get the Subadar's Palace, which is the end of a construction line, which I always like getting the end of those. Average yield farm. Do it. Actually, no, not the farm. Okay, right. We're going to drop this cash to reinforce this army. Then, whatever we've got left, upgrade the port, 
upgrade the government building. Then we're going to sail on to Antigua. Yeah, you can raid that farm, I don't care. To be honest, we're allied with the Dutch. Not the Dutch, we're allied with the Ottomans. I can, probably, I can march through their territory to go attack Zahedan. Probably a good idea, because all they're going to do is just keep building militia to try and overwhelm us. Or I could not attack it, let them keep building up militia, and just spend the money elsewhere for now. Because when I attack, I'm probably going to want to do a big, concise push against Persia. They might be coming out of where no. Where are they going? That's intriguing. That's very intriguing. I don't you don't normally see the AI do things like that. I mean I'd love it if they took if they expanded the little empire in Europe, that'd be really cool. Who are they at war with? Are they gonna go take Tripoli from the Barbary States? That's possible. But yeah, I could just push straight through and take Zahedan, but I'm just going to leave them be, actually. Okay. Trade port. Buckets caught. Upgraded roads. We want to boost production of sugar. And get them... Get these things shipped out. Okay, but probably go crazy... See, you're soon, you're soon building this fleet up. Okay. And then your port. I can't go to a commercial port. I can upgrade Calcutta to a commercial basin. That's going to suck up all of our money, but... Damn, it's going to be worthwhile. All right, just a second, guys. I need to quickly sort something out. Just a second, everyone. And I'm back. Right. So, that's everything spent. To the tech... One more turn till we get Punch Card Loom, then you'll probably go straight over to Machine Tools. Paddling Furnace is actually quite a good one to get, because it's a good boost to income. Uh, the artillery is useful, but not game-changing, but it's the fact that it only takes five turns. So let's get that done. Yep. The armies rise. I mean, we could take Britain as a foothold in Europe, but I don't want to expand... But when I land in Europe, I want to do it all at once. I want to be pushing through the Ottoman territories and land and take Britain itself. East and west. Russian troops on the march. Looks like Sweden is still able to resist them inside their territory. All the knights. Oh, the Portuguese key is going to go take Malta. Please say yes. I've never seen that. They've landed the troops. Where though? So we've got Punch Card Loom, but what happened? <clears throat> That's really cool. I've never, I've never seen anyone attack Malta ever. That's awesome. Okay, commercial base and another commercial port built. We should probably do some upgrading in Ceylon, although it's kind of... It won't ever be as good as I want it to be, because we've got this darn missionary down here. Ooh, a tea warehouse, that's quite expensive. But I suppose it is the end of a production line, but first... You know what I should start doing is to... I don't necessarily want all fourth rates, I do want some fifth rates. I, do want to, I don't want to have just doom stacks of the biggest possible ships. I do want a good mix of high and low. Okay, average yield. Take average yield tea warehouse. 180, it's probably not enough, actually, to recruit a levy. No, it's not. 
I can leave one of you guys here as temporary custodian of the port. Minus seven. Oh, huge amount of religious unrest. Right. So, Curacao would be useful to take to try get a missionary. Unfortunately, though, it does mean I might probably need to take one of my imams, although Goa's majority Muslim now. Still some religious unrest, though. Right. Okay. So where have I got a imam and there's no, or very little religious unrest? You're the closest. So I can probably take it away from here? Or maybe get... Well, I don't want to get rid of the tavern, exactly. Because the camera for reform is creeping up. Spain and Portugal are at war. That's unfortunate, but at least Portugal will, ex will survive. Okay, it means that wherever my next town is, I'm probably going to need to build a madrasa. So you've gone straight on to rolling. Power loom? Nope. Paddling furnace, please. It's only five, and the machine tools are also very, very useful. Yeah, minus 10% recruitment cost for all land units. Who won't? Why would you not like that? Hey, I've got an agent here. I mean, I know it's kind of a bit wasteful just sending them running up like this, but I don't need... I don't... I don't necessarily like using agents to do things, apart from being, like, eyes forward of my battle line. You don't really need them to assassinate generals, you don't really need them to do re to do reconnaissance, because you can see everything anyway. Everything just seems to be progressing. Okay. Let's hit end turn. But I need to hit, keep hitting end turn until I can build a... Yeah, until my next town develops. Turn into a madrasa, hope it spawns a imam, and then ship that imam over to the Caribbean. Then probably don't go for Antigua, go for Caracas, so I can change that uh, workshop into a madrasa as well to try get another scholar and spread the word of Allah around the region, because there will actually be no Islamic influence at all. <gasps> Uh, ooh, do I want to give you fire by rank, actually? Well, we are allies. Why the hell not? Ultimately, everyone's going to be getting fire by rank soon. They've taken Stockholm. So I suppose a strong Sweden on the northern flank is good for me. And we are allies. So why not? I've got, I've used my firepower advantage to gain India. And it won't be long till everyone's got it anyway. So 15,000. Okay. Sugar warehouse, upgrade the port. Start to build a bit of a garrison. But I'm hoping the Thrakers court or the government building as I improve that, that should reduce that should improve repression. Um okay. See so yeah, like how much how many turns have I spent building stuff and look how much stuff I've got still to build. Got another dockyard. You are going to be a trade port because we don't need loads of military dockyards. You're going to build a sloop. Could probably do with carrying on my road building initiative. Up here to Jane. Good. Yeah, building up a good little fleet there. I mean, Mangalore has got to be growing. Three turns, <laughs> Mangalore grows. Okay, it's unfortunate that Arcot's territory was a port rather than a town, but them's the breaks. Chanda is going to grow in ten turns.
<laughs> I do need to keep building up my military infrastructure as well, because of when the war does come, I'm going to need to start churning troops out everywhere. And that's why I do still want a military governor's barracks, because we are still going to need Hindu infantry, and you can't recruit Hindu infantry past a certain level, because they're like one of the few infantry types I can recruit in mass that both form square and can fire by rank. Yeah, I'm hoping my militia garrison plus government buildings in the Caribbean can allow me to expand a bit quicker than waiting for all that to happen in India. Especially because I'd rather not build any more madrasas in India. New town emerges, Jaipur, Rajputana. Because yeah, you're mostly Islamic anyway, so you're kind of not needed to have a madrasa anywhere. You're going to put a Subhadar's palace. Drop some money on some tea warehouses because that'll be the final level of investment required. No, don't do that because I'm going to want to... <gasps> right arc. Four turns. Oh, I don't have any money. Okay, in my head I was like, what? Okay. Put a fifth rate instead. Yeah, because you're Caribbean. Or do I want to... Do I want to... Uh... No. I think, I think I'm okay with these construction plans. Ah, uh, yes, the sloop. There we go. Trade gain. No sense of shame. Good. Uh, Body house could be due with it being upgraded to a brothel in Mysore, because I do not want a rebellion. I am, temp I am tempted in the future to hold a campaign where I do kick off with a rebellion and I start the campaign as one style of government and transition to another that could be quite interesting although to be honest changing governments in empire total war doesn't really make a huge difference in general you are uh incentivized to crank down all your policies anyway to spur population and economic growth so, at that point, no one really cares about you. I mean, for example, it might have some minor impacts, like... In Trinidad, where the lower classes really hate me, if I was Republic... National debt... Carry on. Because you need to be a, become a modern university once you've got the rights of man, but I do want to build a, this up first. Raja's Academy would also be good. I mean, I might just stack up four rates for three turns, so then that's their... They're at their maximum level. Ooh, public servant dies. Ministers, who replaced him? Hey, I've got an American minister now. Frugal and thrifty. Don't want you. Plus one happiness, plus one treasury, plus one management. Okay, he's just kind of a generic guy. I mean, this guy's as good as any to govern India. Ceylon, I've got some roads, a lot of other buildings have been upgraded, so I could probably do with spending this surplus money on farms, most probably. Or maybe... Yeah, 
Yeah, just build a farm with it. And then if there's anything else I can spend it on. Well, maybe repair the Jebek. There we go. Okay, the new chaps can maybe pick up an Islamic swordsman unit. Oh, I didn't spend any money on this port here. Pity. Okay. Turn and turn. Yeah, so there really is hasn't been a lot this episode to do. But like I said, it's because I've been fighting hard for so long. These episodes really are necessary. You can't just keep blitzing around the world. You do need to stop and build up your empire. So it can put you in an even stronger position for the next time you blitz. Because you're going to be blitzing against a much harder enemy with later game technologies. Yes, Portugal. If Portugal counters and takes Madrid, that'd be hilarious. So much so. 19,000, that's a good amount of cash. Oh, I was hoping they'd, we, they'd accept peace. I want to trade with you. New town emerges in Hyderabad. As a people, you're fairly happy. For religious unrest, though. I mean, you guys might also get a madrasa. Because that actually isn't a bad investment. Uh, trading port. I mean, it's trading port with my capital, so that should be a no-brainer. You buy a sloop, ready to occupy the port. Okay. Fracker's Mansion. Just, may as well just max out this territory, as I've only got the one. The one territory to worry about over here. So you're minus three. So if I hop you guys in, you're now zero, and you should gain some good... Bonuses as the resistance to foreign occupation goes down. If you build one more, they can garrison the port. Actually, I could just build a sloop. So next turn, when the sloop's ready, we'll push on and take Punda. Okay. Then let's... Fourth rate. Build a fifth rate for now. Actually, no, I don't need to put a fourth rate. Stacked up, haven't I? So the next, as soon as this guy finishes, they're on, we're on to something new. So I may as well drop this on some fourths, some fifths, sorry. Oh, I agree the Madrasa, why the hell not? Good. Let's hit end turn. Soon the Dutch will be back, and in greater numbers. <sighs> They're advancing into Sweden. Well, Denmark, I suppose, but the Swedish Empire territory! I think we're trading with Sweden. If not, we should be. Italian states are sparring with someone, potentially the Dutch, because they've got Milan. Have they got Milan? Yes, they have. They've taken Turin, they've taken Milan, they're pushing into former Catholic territory. Puddling Furnace, good stuff. So they have got... Yes. United Provinces are expanding quite significantly. Three top tier universe top tier technologies researched. You've got your madrasa. Actually, that's probably not waste money upgrading that just yet. Twenty one thousand this time. I mean, there's so many places, so many useful places to spend 
capital, what you start to see is it just snowballs and it's beautiful. Yeah, let's build the tea plantation, let's upgrade. This madrasa in Akbarabad. Actually, no, we don't need to upgrade that. Most madrasas we don't really need to upgrade. Like your zero religious unrest. So you're actually tempted to destroy it. I am tempted to destroy it. I'm not going to lose any religious agents. Because the game doesn't last long enough for them to die of old age. They can be assassinated, but they just won't. Okay, I'll be in the boarding house here because that was becoming a problem. So you've got puddling furnace, you've hopped straight on to machine tools. That's not bad. Maybe I might want to go back to the military side. Maybe far in advance to get the training level for infantry units, because when we do boom and start recruiting troops everywhere, that's going to be real handy. Okay, so... Sail on to Punda! Oh, we're done, lucky they didn't intercept us. Land your troops. Yeah, we're so lucky they didn't intercept us. Book it. <laughs> I mean, if you try and fight us, that would be quite interesting. Paul Prota. That's a significant navy. That's part of the reason why Santa Domingo and Cuba are so valuable, because you provide those dual dockyards. You're still getting income and you're also getting some good military production. Lots of good traits. Ooh, don't really waste your time on grape shot. Go for copper bottoms. Increased range and increased speed. Increased cost as well, but meh. Twenty one thousand now. Good. Good, good, good. Got a naval hospital. Ooh, good, we're being attacked. But looking at the timer, I believe it's time to end the episode. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed, and we'll see you next time as we fight the Dutch in Curaçao. Cheers, everyone.